Everybody, I'm Felicity Rieken and you're joining me here today at MC Weiler Primary School in Alexandra, Johannesburg. We're going to be joining Mrs. Impini in a maths class to see how maths has changed with the new RNCS and to see what that change means for the teaching of mathematics. I'm sure Mrs. Impini's class is ready to start. Let's go in and join her, quietly. Right, we are going to a factory shop and we are going to mix paint. And we are going to have the blue and the yellow. That is, that is the paint that we are going to mix. What do you think the color will be when I mix the paint? Green. We are going to get green. Mix the two parts to see which color are we going to get. We mixed one. Yellow out of how many spoons? Out of, out of two spoons? Out of two spoons. And then we mixed another one blue out of how many spoons? Zanelle, out of two spoons. This lesson is about learning to name fractions in a practical situation. Now we are going to mix our own paints with different measurements, right? Yes. I'm going to give each and every group a measurement to paint. These are the measurements. We are going to mix two yellow, six blue for one group, three yellow, nine blue, for another group. Each group will work on mixing only one of the mixes. They then will paint some of that mix on a piece of white paper. When all of them are done, they'll all have a look to see if they got the color that they expected. Is this kind of lesson really maths though? Some people would argue that the only real maths was the children learning to name fractions. The mixing of paint and stuff can be done in the arts and culture lesson where they can use and apply their knowledge. So, should we be wasting precious time in a maths lesson on mixing paint? We are here at the Funda Centre to talk to Mr. Philip de Homo, a project manager for Math, Science and Technology for the Gauteng Department of Education about the new curriculum. First of all, what is mathematics? Is it defined clearly in the new curriculum? It's largely defined as a human activity uh, that has got features like you specialize, you know, investigations and coming up with patterns and making sense of what you're actually doing. It is not uh, culture free. There are cultures normally frozen within, within it as a, as a subject. And then within it actually, uh, it becomes a tool uh, that uh, every citizen needs for life, for everyday activities to, to, to cope with the issues of life. OBE requires that lessons be learner-centred. What does this actually mean? Being learner-centred, I think it's, it's for a long time in, in curriculum cycles, the, the, the teacher was the main actor in the classroom. But then OBE, outcomes based education, the name tells it, the, the focus is on the outcomes as they are being attained by the learner. So it's shifting the learner more to the center of the learning so that the learner begins to own the process of learning and can begin to critique it, question, and criticize where, where, where needs to be. Can you explain what you're doing differently in this class to the way that you were teaching maths before? This time it seems that the child, it's a child-centered lesson. The learners do a lot of talking, a lot of activities on their own. They are responsible for whatever they are doing. Now that the learners have mixed their paints and seen the results, they must try and prove or explain using maths why one color is different from the other. Right, do the colors look the same, all of them? No. No. So which one is different? Which one is different? 
The second of last. What color is it in pop? Green. Why do you think it's, it's different from the others? It's different because we pour three teaspoons of yellow and three teaspoons of blue color. Because we have uh, three yellow and three blue. That made it to be green, to be different from the others, right? All together, how many spoons did we put? Zondo? We put six spoons. We put six spoons all together. For yellow, we had three spoons out of six spoons. And for blue, we put three spoons out of six spoons. So what do you notice there? The, the three, the two, the two numbers, they are half half, they are equal. Because the spoons were equal. So they gave us that green color. So because they are equal, they give us the green color. Maths often gets its meaning from the context in which it is applied. This means that when we relate the mathematics to real life situations, it acquires more meaning for young learners and they can develop the ideas through their experimentation. So introducing concrete activities for experimenting and discovering is a powerful learning and teaching technique in the early stages. This works more effectively than just telling them rules and methods which they do not understand. And we're discovering that maths is more skill-based than was previously recognized by teachers. There seems to be a lot more focus on the learning of skills in the curriculum more than there was in the past. Can you explain what that is about? What is the difference between knowledge and well, skills? All right, let me give an example. Uh, the skill is largely the, the, the ability to do something, largely out of practice, out of repetition, and so on. But knowledge is a different level. Take, for instance, in, in, in soccer circles, a team, the coach will be sitting there with the knowledge as to what has to happen in the ground. But the players themselves have got the skill to do it by virtue of repetition and so on. He knows what needs to be done, but he can't do it. He doesn't have the skill, maybe because of age or whatever, but he knows. So the knowledge and the skill, there's a fine line of difference between them, but indeed they are different. Let's look further at the definition of mathematics in the RNCS. We see spelled out for us the knowledge and skills which the mathematics learning area, as distinct from the other learning areas, specifically covers. The mathematics learning area includes interrelated knowledge and skills. These lists of knowledge and skill words help us to understand what mathematics is all about. Knowledge involves numbers, operations and their relationships. Patterns, functions and algebra. Space and shape. Measurement and data handling. These are the five broad strands of mathematics as practiced all over the world. Memorize facts about, for example, shapes is not useful unless one can use that knowledge to develop other knowledge or in practical situations. So knowledge must be learned hand in hand with skills. Here are some of the mathematical skills mentioned specifically in the RNCS. Representation and interpretation, estimation and calculation, reasoning and communication, problem posing, problem solving and investigation, and describing and analyzing. In Mrs. Mpini's lesson, we've just seen the integration of knowledge and skills in action. Many of the learners knew already that one quarter is equivalent to two eighths. They use that knowledge to investigate and solve a problem. That is, to identify which paint mixture would give a different shade of green to the others and to communicate with each other while solving the problem. Did you notice that the knowledge specific to the mathematics learning area is in fact the same as the names for the mathematics learning outcomes? Let's hear more from Ms. Simpeni about learning outcomes. One of the principles of the new curriculum is teaching and learning should be outcomes based. What is the knowledge outcome you wanted to achieve for this lesson? The knowledge outcome that I want to achieve from this lesson is that to make the learners know their fractions and use them in their daily life.
The other thing is that we encourage them to think on their own so that when they answer, they answer on their own. What skills would the learners have developed and practiced in this lesson? Thinking skills are the most important. And tell us about the values. The values is that they work together, they respect one another, and they use to discuss on their own to come to a conclusion. Mrs. Mpini has shown us that she's based her lesson on specific knowledge, skills, and value. This makes sense, seeing that we've now adopted an outcomes-based approach to education in South Africa. Let's find out more about what the curriculum says about outcomes from Ms. Dijomo. Could you explain, does the curriculum stipulate the exact outcomes which must be met each year? Yes, of course, the curriculum has got the outcomes. Every subject has got its own learning outcomes, which are very clear to the learners and to the educators. Like in mathematics, you've got five outcomes which are specific in terms of what the learners have to attain at the end of the year. And every subject will be having three, four, three, four, but those are the broad goals of a subject. What is an assessment standard? An assessment standard is a, is a further breakdown of an outcome. Let, let me take an example. Uh, in mathematics, you've got an outcome like numbers, relationships, and patterns as a broad outcome. Within that, you break it down into what the learners should specifically be able to do in terms of the ability to count up to 10 for those who are still young, the ability to count in multiples of five. Now those are, those are further breakdown portions of a learning outcome. And those are the parts that are being assessed, the criteria for assessment. How is a teacher expected to handle a situation in which some learners are achieving the assessment standards and which other learners are not yet achieving it? Can she go on to a new topic or not? The key thing with outcomes-based education is that you can learn, everybody can learn, but the pace can be different. The outcomes can be achieved at different rates. Now with the educator in a classroom, the educator would know if I cover this uh, piece of work, others would be quicker in attaining uh, the, the required kind of a competency within that classroom. Uh, and then as a result, the teacher would pace it up, have a number of tasks for those who are fast learners as one way of doing it, and so that those who are slow can have their pace over the remaining work. Alternatively, the teacher can say, okay, those who are faster, let them assist those that are slower, so that it become a shared kind of a, a product within the class. We've heard a lot that maths must be rooted in real context. What are the implications for this for the maths classroom? That has been the missing part in mathematics, because as immediately you take mathematics to be a maths in the classroom, with figures in the classroom, and you, you, you remove it from the real life outside, is when you begin to lose your learners. I think mathematics is part of the social life. If, if we talk of mathematics in the context of real life, let's take for instance that football pitch. Football pitch, you want to cover the learning outcome, shape, space, and measurement, which is part of the curriculum. But you take the learners to the football ground. In the football ground, there is a center which is a circle. There is a center of the pitch. There are lines that would give you parallelograms and rectangles within that. You can talk about the area of the pitch, and when you do that, the learners, it makes sense to them because it's closer to them. It's something within their everyday life. And whether you bring mathematics into the football pitch or take the football pitch into the classroom, it makes sense that there is a continuum or a, a, you know, a context linked to what they are learning. And you can go on with uh, lots of examples in terms of real life, whatever. So linking this mathematics with the real life context makes it more meaningful, makes it closer, accessible to the learners. It becomes also friendly for them. And then that's why we only be speaking of the fear of mathematics. You know, We'll be speaking about the love and the joy that goes with it. Could you describe a couple of other ways in which teachers could make lessons more learner-centered? Yes, in a number of ways. I mean, if you, like I said, if you take uh, if you take a classroom where the learners become more active, you can take the learners themselves to generate their own data within the same classroom. Saying uh, the learners, we have got a, a something black in terms of their clothing. Then they can generate their data. How many learners have got black? They enumerate about 10 of them. How many pink? They do the work themselves. And as they do the work themselves, they can begin to put that into tables in terms of tabulating it or producing graphs for that. When you do that, you, the teacher is there to initiate it, just to bring in the initial uh, you know, you know, you know, plaque 
to, 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 to the start of the work. From there, the learners can take over, they can interrogate, they can do a lot of things. The teacher will keep on coming in, mediating the learning to make sure that they are learning what she expects of them to learn. Lessons will take longer now that learners are given a chance to think and reason for themselves. You as a teacher must be patient. Your only objective is not just to get them to know something. You could do this in the first five minutes of the lesson and then do lots of drill and practice activities as we used to do in the past. Your objective is to give children a chance to construct their own knowledge. A. So they understand it. B. So they truly believe it. And C. So they can apply it in other situations. Or at the very least you've given them a chance to think and reason for themselves. The mathematical skills have been enhanced and practiced. The skills of thinking, reasoning, problem solving, interpreting, describing, etc. Remember, people only learn to think and reason by doing lots of thinking and reasoning. So give your learners plenty of time and multiple opportunities to think and reason. The benefit that I see is that the learners do their own work. They encourage the thinking skills and they do practical and they know that maths can be done in class and can be used outside in their environment. So I hope we've managed to convince you that mathematics is more than just learning and practicing some rules on a piece of paper and if we teach maths using the methods envisaged by the new curriculum I'm convinced our children will be better equipped for maths at a higher level they'll also be able to apply it in the outside world. They'll even start loving maths. I like mathematics because it's helped me about maths and when I'm growing up, I'm going to get a great job. I like mathematics because I think it's the most important subject in my life. In the next few episodes, we're going to share with you some effective approaches to maths teaching. We hope you'll join us for each of those.